Thanks to Linode for supporting this SciShow video. To check them out, go to linode.com slash scishow. That link gives you a $100 60-day credit on a new Linode account. You might not think about the food in your freezer much, especially when trying to find a room between the bags of peas and carrots for one more bag of french fries. But those frozen fries, and everything else in your freezer, are surprisingly worthy of pondering, given that they are the end result of a pretty clever innovation. As it turns out, getting things from where they were grown or harvested into your freezer is harder than you would think and doing it wrong leaves you with food that is basically ruined. The technique that keeps your frozen broccoli green and your dumplings fresh helped solve major problems with nutrition in the 20th century, and it all started with a guy going fishing. We know that things like meat and produce can spoil quickly. In warm temperatures, organic matter becomes an ideal breeding place for decomposers and pathogenic bacteria. Those microbes can make you sick, or at the very least, just make your food look and taste bad. So preventing foods from spoiling has been an important thing for us for an extremely long time. One particular concern is Staphylococcus, which is the kind of food poisoning you are most likely most familiar with. It causes a sudden onset of nausea and vomiting that usually lasts around a day. I had it earlier this year. Meatballs. Staphylococcus thrives when food is kept at temperatures between 4 and 60 degrees Celsius for more than two hours. So inconsistently cold temperatures are somewhat risky. There's also another food illness classic, E. coli. E. coli can even survive in dried meat. So lots of food storage methods that work on a lot of things still can't beat it. Fermenting and canning might be tricky, too. If you don't do it right, you could end up accidentally making the perfect breeding ground for the bacteria that causes botulism. botulism is an especially dangerous kind of food poisoning that affects the nervous system and may even lead to paralysis and death. The only method of food storage that prevents your food from wilting and keeps you from getting sick is freezing it. So you'd think that once we had the technology to keep stuff cold, we'd be freezing our food all the time, right? Well, not so much. It turns out that freezing food is harder than you'd think. At least it's difficult if you want that food to still taste good at the end. Early efforts at bringing frozen foods to the masses turned once delicious veggies into a soggy, tasteless mess when they thawed. When food freezes slowly, the water can form large ice crystals that puncture the cell membranes of whatever's being frozen, causing those changes in texture and quality. This is especially noticeable in things like frozen produce, because the plant cell walls get broken apart by the ice crystals and they lose all their structure, leading to gross, mushy veggies. Plus, when these foods thaw, they release a lot of water and with it a lot of their flavor. So frozen food wasn't exactly appealing to most consumers, and there just wasn't demand for it. But then, along came Clarence Birdseye. And you may have heard that name before. It might even be on one or two packages of frozen veggies in your freezer right now. While living in Northeast Canada, he noticed that when he went ice fishing with some Inuit people, their fish that they caught would freeze almost immediately after it got tossed onto the ice. And those fish tasted perfectly fresh when they were thawed out and cooked, even for months after being caught. Birdseye realized that fast freezing leads to smaller ice crystals, which cause less damage to the food and results in a better product. So beginning in the 1920s, he used that knowledge to develop two novel ways to freeze food quickly. In the first, packages of food were placed between two metal plates that had been cooled with a calcium chloride solution to around minus 40 degrees Celsius. The second method used a combination of both temperature and pressure. They used ammonia to cool hollow metal plates, and the food was pressurized between the cooled plates. And that process could chill some foods down to minus 32 degrees Celsius in just 30 minutes. But the key to Birdseye's success wasn't just getting things cold. Birdseye also developed new ways to package food, including using waterproof containers and removing air before sealing. All these innovations helped keep moisture in the food, so when it was thawed, it would still retain its quality, making frozen food a much better option all around. Still, it took some time for frozen foods to catch on. Or rather, it took some time for the technology to catch up with what Birdseye was selling. Since in the 1930s, most people didn't have a freezer at home to store frozen foods in. Freezers didn't start finding their way to 
people's homes until after World War II. And eventually, frozen foods finally started to gain traction in American homes. Bird's eyes innovations matter for a lot of reasons, and not just because they gave us all unfettered access to frozen french fries. Before bird's eyes frozen food, lots of people weren't able to eat produce year-round. Instead, they ate what they could during the growing season, and then the rest of the time, produce just wasn't available. Frozen food gave people access to produce all year long. This was great for providing culinary variety, but it was also important because it helped people maintain healthier, more nutritious diets year-round. So that guy, whose name might very well be on your frozen peas and carrots, wasn't just the founder of a profitable business. He was also a guy who saved us all from long winters with nothing to eat except bread and pickles. Who knew there was so much interesting food history hiding behind those ice cream pints? This SciShow video is supported by Linode, a cloud computing company from Akamai. Linode helps keep the global internet running by providing storage space, databases, analytics, and more to you and your company. Need to regularly back up your projects? They've got you covered. Need people to manage your database? They do that. Need a tutorial or a 24-7 award-winning customer support representative to help you through all these processes? They provide it all. If you're cloud curious but don't know what I'm talking about, you can read their beginner's guide to cloud computing at linode.com slash what is cloud computing. And once you feel confident about your decision to get started with Linode, you can click on the link in the description or head to linode.com slash scishow for a $100 60-day credit on a new Linode account. Thanks to everybody who worked on this SciShow video, and thank you for watching all the way to the end.